All right, let's go ahead and talk about the structure of the Spark SQL API because that's what we are going to use in the next couple of videos when we do the code demonstrations. Now, I want to give you a brief overview about how the Spark SQL API is structured. Now, everything we are going to use is going to be located within the org.apache.spark.sql package. So that's the SQL API that we've been referring to previously. And here are the main actors we're going to use. First of all, there is the Spark session, which is the central entry point in our application into the Spark world. We use the Spark session, for example, to provide configuration about how it should be executed. Then we can use it to basically run SQL queries we use it to create data frames. So we can either read a data frame. So then we would call the dot read method and we will get a data frame reader, which implements many of the file sources. So for example, ZSV, JSON, um, Parquet, Avro, and so on. All of them, all of them are accessible through the Spark session. So that's the first thing we will have to do in our Spark application to instantiate a Spark session. Secondly, so the second most important abstraction in Spark SQL is the data set. And this is basically an abstraction of distributed data. And it is a typed data set. So it has a generic type T. And usually what we do is we use a data set of rows, but we're going to talk about this later. Now the data set API also referred to a data frame in Python has or provides the SQL like API. So on a data set, we can call dot select to select some columns, dot filter to filter out rows, and we can add new columns or we can join data sets, for example. So on the data set, the SQL like API is defined. As I said before, in Python, we only work with a data frame, which is basically a data set of type row. And the row type, which is the next one here, is basically a generic type for representing a row in a data frame. So you can think of one row in a table being modeled here as this row type. So the row has a schema and we can use accessors to get the values from one row. For example, if you had a row consisting of two columns, ID and value, we could say on the row, um, row.get and then ID, and we will, we can retrieve the value for this particular row for that um, column. Hey, and sorry for interrupting your learning. If you would like to become a pro level Spark engineer within a short period of time, I would like to point you to my individual coaching program, which you can find in my academy. Now I will work with you over the course of 12 weeks as if we were colleagues in a professional working setup meaning we will have weekly sessions and in between I will ask you to complete assignments and we are going to do code reviews together. Also, you will get access to all of the video courses that exist in my academy and you can ask me any question you have about Apache Spark. Within this 12 weeks, I will teach you everything I know about Apache Spark from 10 years of experience as a freelance data engineer. In this academy, you can also find many video courses, for example, on PySpark and Spark with Scala, also an in-depth course on understanding Spark internals. All right, let's waste no time and continue on the course. That brings us to the next major player, which is the column. And you can think of that as being one column in a data frame and it has it basically has a type and a name and it also provides us with some of the functionality or some functionality so we can cast a row into a different data type we can assign a new alias which is a new column name or we can compare for equality with a different column or we can add so we can modify data in the column and that's what's provided on the column class itself and then we have an object which is the sql.functions object, which actually provides us with a wide variety of functions which we can use together with data frames and columns. And here we have, I don't know, hundreds of um, functions available which we can use in our program. Finally, we have the data types, which are defined in org apache spark sql.types. And within that package, we can find, for example, struct type, integer type, string type, date type, uh, which are only a small selection. And these data types are used in the schema 
So for the row schema and the data set or data frame schema to specify of which type a particular column is. And that's basically a brief overview of the SQL package. Um, and we are going to use this a lot in the upcoming videos. Yeah, that's it for the theoretical introduction of this video course. In the upcoming videos, we are going to use all of that in many, many hands-on demonstrations. I hope you're excited and let's get started.